What's up, everyone? Uh, only a little bit longer, I swear. Uh, <laughs> Shadows will be out on Magic Online April 18th, officially. So we have this week and then another dead week. Maybe I'll try and get a Legacy deck together. Uh, but this week we have more Popper, and this is the deck that I've always wanted to play, I think. Just in my heart of hearts, I know. Uh, Grixis, kill your stuff, draw some cards. Uh, has a nice little inevitability engine with Is It Cronarch and Reaping the Graves in the late game, so I love it. That's basically all there is to it. But, uh, mini artifact theme. We have the full 12 artifact lands. Uh, I guess not Darksteel Citadel, but Great Furnace, Seat of the Synod, Vault of Whispers. Uh, we have Prophetic Prism and Icker Wellspring. Uh, the, the two actual artifacts come up pretty well with Kaldotha Rebirth, uh, but all the other artifacts are basically in there for Thoughtcast. Uh, nice little card drawer in addition to our Moldrifters, but the big payoff is the Popper Siege Rhino. ETB Drain for four, man. You thought Rhino was good. Wait until you see these guys. They got like Wolverine Claws. What's going on here? I don't know. I actually had like two foil ones of these too. I was pretty excited, but... Yeah, uh, Bleak Up and Vampires for, for the mid-game, uh, Life Gain and Drain Him Out. Also pretty nice with Ghostly Flicker, uh, a card that caught me by surprise when I played against this deck with Tron. Uh, he got me pretty good. Uh, but yeah, this is basically Yogg's Grixis control deck. Uh, I changed a couple things, not a ton. I cut the excludes, and I, I basically didn't want to spend like 10 tickets on excludes. Uh, same deal with no Gorilla Shamans in the sideboard, no Hydro Blast, so, uh, I'm kinda, I'm, I'm playing, uh, like, Popper Popper, I guess? I don't know. But, uh, I, I didn't think the Excludes really meshed all that well with this deck anyway, just because you're kind of a tap-out deck, so it didn't seem great to me. There's, like, Changer's Edicts, and Firebolts, and Mold Drifters, and whatnot, Vampires. Like, when, when do you have time to exclude stuff? Also, there are some Karoos in the mana base, so it makes excluding even more difficult. So... I don't know, I just didn't really see when you would actually have time to actually cast Exclude, and if you held open Exclude mana and passed the turn and they didn't do anything, you didn't really have anything to do with your mana. You had, like, maybe Terminate, and that was about it. So, uh, Exclude definitely deals with a bunch of stuff pretty cleanly, including Mole Drifter, but I was like, whatever, I have Reaping the Graves, I can I can outgrind him in, in the mid to late, I think, unless we're playing a Mirror Match. Then uh, things get interesting, I don't know what actually happens there. But, yeah, a uh, bunch of dual lands. Not not good ones, because, you know, it's Popper, but we have some Bloodfell Caves, uh, some Swiftwater Cliffs, like I said, a couple Karoos, one of each, a Mortuary Mire to get back our Mole Drifter, Vampire, whatever, and just a pile of removal spells. Gavag Blast is pretty nice. Uh, also helps the Burnout plan with the Bleak Coven Vampire. Same deal with Firebolt. Uh, Chainer's Edict is just nice. There are some, some boggly decks out there that, like I played against last week. And I guess Hard Terminate. Terminate's fine. I don't know. Could just be like more Firebolts and Edicts probably, but whatever. Uh, as for the sideboard, some more Counterspell. Well, not more Counterspells because we cut the Counterspells, but we have some Annulls, some Dispels, some Pyroblasts, uh, Duress, which is probably reasonable in the mirror. Uh, I wanted another Reaping the Graves, just because it seemed like kind of the nut card in these grindy matchups. Uh, Bleak Coming Vampires seemed like it would be pretty nice uh, against red decks, and maybe in the mirrors, I don't know, just having like an additional threat, another thing to nug them seemed pretty good. Uh, we got a Bajiggity Bog, which, I don't know, there's, there's just like a lot of decks that kind of randomly use their graveyard, and I'll probably side in the 23rd land more than once. And then we just have the full boat of electricries for the red decks. Little goblin-y decks. But yeah, that's it. Uh, this deck is sweet. I uh, hope I win some matches. Last week was kind of embarrassing, but this deck looks much better. So let's go.